I noticed yesterday because I did two things in a row that um, the second video I did, I was I was better at doing it. <laughs> so I thought I'd kind of try to like if I'm gonna do two reviews, I should have one that's like for practice, and then the other one's better or something. Also, I should have a better mic soon, so that's pretty cool. Don't have to feel like I'm shouting all the time just to be heard. Ah, eh, whatever, I don't care. So, I was kind of thinking, like, reviewing every movie that's been nominated for an Oscar, pretty much, and, like, and that seems like a really epic journey if I'm doing that, but figure, like, slowly over time, you know, I'll get there. But just doing it in order to keep, like, the playlist on make on YouTube and stuff in order, and, like, in order to keep it... In order, in order to keep it in order. I'll probably just stick to one Oscars at a time outside of the newest ones whenever those come out. Like the one going on now. Yeah, see how horrible these are? The first video of the night? Man. The first Academy Awards happened in 1929, I think. Or 19... Oh, it was 1929, but it, it was for two years instead of just one year like it normally is. It was uh, 1927 and 28. And they decide to only give awards for the first Oscars to silent movies. Though they did give a special award to the jazz singer, to Warner Brothers for creating the jazz singer or something. In a way, the whole the whole event, sort of, or whatever. It was a really short event that wasn't publicized or even on the radio or anything. It was a private affair. It was kind of an homage to the silent era, because talkies just started in 1927 with the jazz singer. And I think everyone kind of knew, and they were putting this event together or whatever, that silent the silent era was over. You know, like the talkies were on the way in, and silent movies would soon be a thing of the past. And maybe, like, doing this and paying homage to, like, all the silent movies... Or to just silent movies from the last two years. They gave a special award to Charlie Chaplin, too, um, for all his work in the industry. And he basically basically made the silent movie industry what it was all by himself. But this was the only time they um, really had silent movies in the Oscars. I think maybe there was some here and there in the coming years. But I think everyone kind of realized it was on the way out. Some people held on. <laughs> there was like uh, some th thought at the time being like, oh, talkies aren't real movies. They're just, they're just all gimmicky and showy. And they kind of were at first. That quickly changed and then quickly became apparent that like silent movies were dead. It did not take long. But some persisted. For a bit. Especially in other countries, because technology was a little slower to catch up at the time. But on that note, I guess I'll start the review of Seventh Heaven, which was the first movie to have the most nominations, which was five. I don't know, I think, I know it won Best Actress, but this was the only Oscar where people were considered for multiple things for one award. So she was Best Act, she won Best Actress. But it was for three different movies, because she was also in Sunrise and something else, I forget. But this movie was about a sewer... He was a street sweeper, but he basically just worked in the sewer or something. It was kind of strange. And he's a bit of a doofus, actually. But he's like so... He's like happy-go-lucky the whole time. He like doesn't really kind of think too much before he does things kind of person um and then the woman in it she's like a homeless person but like living with this this older woman who's constantly abusing her and i think maybe she's supposed to be a prostitute but if she is it's that's not really clear but then she's out and this guy just kind of sees her and they talk for a bit i think but then 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 like the cops comes around he's like who are you women can't be out at night or something and then then he steps up he's like she's my wife and he's like oh that's all right then Boop, 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 and goes trumbling along. Uh, and then he takes her home, but then he meets the older woman, and uh, he's just, he's just like, you're, you're a horrible person. I, you, you should get out of here. And they, so he takes her back to, he's like, you can stay at my house for a bit, but just know when the, if the cops ever come by, uh, you, I'm gonna tell them the truth or whatever. And, but, and he keeps being like, yeah, you should leave. Maybe you should leave. Leave tomorrow. One more day, and then you leave tomorrow, pretty much, kind of thing. And then. <laughs> Um, but he's just so happy to go like, do, do, and then, um, but she kind of keeps hinting that she wants to, she wants to actually get married and not just be a fake marriage or something, but he's just like, do, do, do. Um, oh, and that's the thing, like, everything I read was said this was like a romantic drama, but I def, it was definitely a comedy, but I just think it wasn't a comedy for the day and age, you know? It was more like a, more, it was more like a romantic comedy from the 90s of all things. The silent era movie that invented the romantic comedy. Probably not. 
It's more like a 90s rom-com of all things. <laughs> That's what it felt like, you know. It had like kind of a similar pacing. It felt like something with... Like maybe Adam Sandler is the lead role because he'd be a similar dude. It was like, oop, just sweeping the sweeping the sewer, you know, or whatever. I, that's a horrible Adam Sandler impression. Then after a while, he finally like figures out he brings home a wedding dress, and she's like really surprised by it because he kept being he kept being kind of like, yeah, hey, you're just gonna leave. Uh, when I come home tomorrow, I'll just kick you out. So don't even be here when I get back and stuff. And then he like comes back with the wedding dress and, um. <laughs> And she's just like, what? What? He's like, well, I, don't you want to marry me? And she's like, well, yeah, but you never even told me you loved me. And then he's like, I can't tell you I love you. It's silly. Because <laughs> that's how much of a doofus he is. You know, he's just like, it's silly to say that you love someone. Oh, but then then World War One breaks out. Oh, and it takes place in Paris, France. That you wouldn't know that outside of World War One breaking out all of a sudden, the, like, but his neighbor comes in. He's like, "Oh, we gotta go to war now. <laughs> we gotta leave right now." And so then she comes back because she was uh, going to put on the dress or something. Uh, and he's like, "Well, gotta go to war. I guess we'll get married right here and now." And they they do sort of. Then he goes to war, and she's like, it gets put in a factory, and like this factory surgeon sergeant or something like keeps hitting on her, and be like, "I'll take care of you now. Your boyfriend's probably dead. Don't worry about him." He's probably dead, you know, and then like at, at the war front, he's, he uh, gets attacked and he pretty much dies. And then like that, and then at the end of the movie, like people keep coming, like the sergeant comes in, he's like, your boyfriend's totally dead, but I'll take care of you now. And then the neighbor comes in, he's like, I was there, your boyfriend totally died. And then a priest comes in, he's like, yep, your boyfriend is dead for sure. Absolutely. And then the boyfriend gets in and he's like, well, I was blinded. But I'm still alive. <laughs> but he's like blind now. But he's like such. He's like so happy go lucky. He's just like oh whatever. I feel more alive than before because the war is over now. <laughs> and and we're together go. That's how it ends. And it's just like there were points that were like melodramatic, but because the t the rest of the tone is just so silly and kind of like like I said like an Adam Sandler's rom com. Like the mellow that that made the melodrama like just silly because of it, you know. It's like because it, because it's so over dramatic at these points, and but everything else is just hilarious. Those parts of her are hilarious for being over dramatic, and I don't think that was the point. And maybe I'm missing something because it's from the twenties, but just watching it now, it just felt like a comedy all the way through, pretty much. And I feel like it's something that could be remade for today's audiences but written as a comedy like and just and just forget that it was ever like a romantic drama as it said you know so i movies are kind of an interesting bag if you've never like seen any one of them before i mean like they have intertitles instead of dialogue so it's like when you're watching them you kind of forget that it's silent almost it helps that they usually like in ones like these this one had sound effects added like during the war scenes they actually had like cannon fire sounds and uh there, there was one point when somebody knocked on a door and they actually had somebody knock, or they actually had a knocking sound, which I thought was... I thought that was a nice touch of adding those bits for modern audiences. It, like, just helps. It kind of just helps to forget that you're watching a silent movie. I mean, your brain just kind of gets used to it. Even with the inner titles kind of cutting into the scene after a while, you're just like, oh, that's what they said, and that's back to the scene. It's kind of like watching a foreign film, and, like, after a while, your brain just kind of forgets that they're not speaking English and you're just reading subtitles and stuff. It doesn't feel that way anymore, you know? It doesn't feel like it's a chore that you are you have to do to watch it and enjoy it in the way that it was meant to be enjoyed, I guess. Because I do think that this does a really good job of just being the story, you know? <laughs> it's not like trying to... Like, many silent films I've seen are, like, I think trying too hard to pull one way or the other of being, like, either too over the top with like it's slapstick comedy or way way too melodramatic i mean silent movies are kind of the era of melodrama because you can't hear it you know it just makes sense to for people to over emote on screen and it kind of makes it a little more palatable i guess or like a little easier to swallow i guess this is a very enjoyable film and i really got into it actually like, it was fast-paced, and, like, the fast pace kind of worked for it, even though sometimes it was just ridiculous. Like, like they're just about to get married, and then war breaks out right then. Or, like, like later on, when war stops, it just stops suddenly. It's like, they they come in, it's like, your your boyfriend was killed. 
Um, and then the other guy, like, your boyfriend was definitely killed. Also, we just signed a peace treaty and war's over now. But it worked for the film, I think, like, having that really quick pace. But that also, like, made it feel more like a comedy because, like, the pace was so fast. I don't know why people thought this was a drama back in the day. But it was a very fun movie, and I, I, I would recommend it as long as you don't mind silent movies because i know they're they're like really old <laughs> but it feels almost like a modern day film outside of being silent like it has a similar pacing of modern romantic com- rom-coms like i said well they don't make rom-coms anymore but from like the 90s early 2000s just so long as you can get over the um, racism <laughs> no just so it's just so long as you can get over it being a silent movie i know they're kind of an acquired taste but once you're used to them i'd recommend some <laughs> like i said there are those like ones that are like either too slapstick and just get ridiculous and don't have a plot anymore or the ones that are just over so over melodramatic over melodramatic it's twice as melodramatic as, as normal melodramas i guess <laughs> if you like silent movies i would recommend this one and i guess i'll give it a rating now let's see 24 out of 25 no, that's not. That's that's a terrible rating. Oh, there was a point that was just racist, and it was like for no reason at all. Like he, like before he even meets the girl, he like walks up to the street peddler and sitting next to him is some guy who's obviously a white guy pretending to be a Japanese guy or something. I mean that itself is racist. But then he was eating. He was like he was like eating something that looked like a Kit Kat bar actually, and but he was eating it like nah, 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 like he was a rat or something. It took me a minute to realize, like, what, what, why is he eating it like that? Just because it was, like, so strange, you know? It was just such a strange thing to suddenly see. And they, like, draw attention to it for a second. Like, what's this guy doing here? It's like, I don't know. And that's it. That's basically it. They had no point in being there. It was just a point to be racist for a moment, because it's the 1920s. Not that racists ever need excuses to be racist, but that was just a small thing. I mean, outside of racism (laughs) which is a very big thing but it was just like such a small thing in the movie i kind of forgot about till just now but it's like i should mention that and also detract points i guess because i score this it's like a grade right you know you know like up b minus too racist (laughs) or something and if somebody was racist on a test or something i'd probably just be like zero (laughs) it doesn't matter how good you did also this is a math test so why why i don't know it's one of those things i feel like everything else pretty much works for the movie i'll probably give it a nine out of ten i'll subtract a point i'll subtract a point for the racism it wasn't the most racist thing i've seen in a actual movie especially from the silent era still shouldn't have been there and served no purpose at all but yeah i'd still give it a nine out of ten it was like well just that one thing that i didn't like and everything else i liked about the movie when you remake this movie hollywood leave the racism out of it (laughs) but yeah i actually like i said i do see like this could be a pretty good remake and it could be like an over-the-top comedy if you wanted it to be i know they don't make rom-coms anymore but that's really how it felt to me it's like a 90s or early 2000s rom-com possibly with a young end of sandler in it just gets it felt like a role just for him kind of okay i guess that's it I never know what to say at the end of these outside of like and subscribe.